All right, I am back. I'm sorry about that, guys. That was irritating. My phone just cut off on me. I was right in the middle of a sentence. So, I guess this is now uh, part 6B. <laughs> of Sarah Crew or What Happened at Miss Minchins by Frances Hodgson Burnett. Okay. Let's see, can you hear me? There, I need that. Okie dokie. Let's see here. Hmm. Okay. Oh, that's right. Miss Minchin looked at Sarah and said, I have always been very fond of you, she said. Then Sarah fixed her eyes upon her and gave her one of her odd looks. Have you? She answered. Yes, said Miss Minchin. Amelia and I have always said you were the cleverest child we had with us, and I'm sure we could make you happy as parlor boarder. Sarah thought of the garret and the day her ears were boxed, and of that other day, that dreadful, desolate day when she had been told that she belonged to nobody, that she had no home and no friends, and she kept her eyes fixed on Miss Minchin's face. You know why I would not stay with you, she said. And it seems probable that Miss Minchin did, for after that simple answer, she had not the boldness to pursue the subject. She merely sent in a bill for the expense of Sarah's education and support, and she made it quite large enough. And because Mr. Carisford thought Sarah would wish it paid, it was paid. When Mr. Carmichael paid it, he had a brief interview with Miss Minchin, in which he expressed his opinion with much clearness and force. And it is quite certain that Miss Minchin did not enjoy the conversation. Sarah had been about a month with Mr. Carisford and had begun to realize that her happiness was not a dream. When one night the Indian gentleman saw that she sat a long time with her cheek in her hand looking at the fire. What are you supposing, Sarah? he asked. Sarah looked up with bright color in her cheeks. I was supposing, she said. I was remembering that hungry day and a child I saw. But there were a great many hungry days, said the Indian gentleman, in a rather sad tone of voice. Which hungry day was it? I forgot. You didn't know. It was the day I found the things in my garret. And then she told him the story of the bun shop, and the fourpence, and the child who was hungrier than herself. And somehow as she told it, though she told it very simply indeed, the Indian gentleman found it necessary to shade his eyes with his hand and look down at the floor. And I was supposing a kind of plan, said Sarah. When she had finished, I was thinking I would like to do something. What is it? said her guardian in a low tone. You may do anything you like to do, princess. I was wondering, said Sarah. You know, you say I have a great deal of money, and I was wondering if I could go and see the bun woman and tell her that if, when hungry children, particularly those on dreadful days, come and sit on the steps or looking at the window, she would just call them in and give them something to eat. She might send the bills to me, and I would pay them. Can I do that? You can do it tomorrow morning, said the Indian gentleman. Oh, thank you, said Sarah. You see, I know what it is to be hungry, and it is very hard when one can't even pretend it away. Yes, yes, my dear, said the Indian gentleman. Yes, it must be. Try to forget it. Come and sit on this footstool near my knee, and only remember you are a princess. Yes, said Sarah, and I can give buns and bread to the populace. And she went and sat on the stool, and the Indian gentleman, he used to like to call, he used to like her to call him that too, sometimes, in fact, very often, drew her small, dark head down upon his knee and stroked her hair. The next morning, a carriage drew up before the door of the baker's shop, and a gentleman and a little girl got out, oddly enough, just as the bun woman was putting a tray of smoking hot buns in the window. When Sarah entered the shop, the woman turned and looked at her, and leaving the buns, came and stood behind the counter. For a moment she looked at Sarah, very hard indeed, and then her good-natured face lighted up. "'I'm sure I remember you, miss,' she said, and yet—' "'Yes,' said Sarah, "'once you gave me six buns for four pence, and you gave five of them to a beggar child,' said the—' "'Sorry, the page is thick.' It's old, said the woman. I've always remembered it. I couldn't make it out at first. I beg pardon, sir, 
But there's not many young people that notices a hungry face in that way, and I've thought of it many a time. Excuse the liberty, miss, but you look rosier and better than you did that day. I am better, thank you, said Sarah, and, and I am happier, and I have come to ask you to do something for me. Me, miss, exclaimed the woman. What bless you? Yes, miss, what can I do? And then Sarah made her a little proposal, and the woman listened to it with an astonished face. Why, bless me, she said, when she had heard it all. Yes, miss, it'll be a pleasure for me to do it. I am a working woman myself and can't afford to do much on my own account, and there are sights of trouble on every side. But if you'll excuse me, I'm bound to say I've given many a bit of bread away since that wet afternoon, just just along a thinking of you, and how wet and cold you was, and how you looked. And yet you gave away your hot buns as if you was a princess. The Indian gentleman smiled involuntarily, and Sarah smiled a little too. She looked so hungry, she said. She was hungrier than I was. She was starving, said the woman. Many's the time she told me of it since, how she sat there in the wet and felt as if a wolf was a tearing at her poor young insides. Oh, have you seen her since then, exclaimed Sarah. Do you know where she is? Oh, I know, said the woman. Why, she's in that there back room now, miss, and she's been here for a month, and a decent, well-meaning girl she's going to turn out, and such a help to me in the shop, in the day shop, and in the kitchen, as you'd scarce believe, knowing how she's lived. She stepped to the door of the little, ba little back parlor and spoke, and the next minute a girl came out and followed her behind the counter, and actually it was the beggar child, clean and neatly clothed and looking as if she had not been hungry for a long time. She looked shy, but she had a nice face, now that she was no longer a savage, and the wild look had gone from her eyes. And she knew Sarah in an instant, and stood and looked at her as if she could never look enough. You see, said the woman, I told her to come here when she was hungry, and when she'd come, I'd give her odd jobs to do. And I found she was willing, and somehow I got to like her. And the end of it was, I'd given her a place and a home, and she helps me and behaves as, well as is as thankful as a girl can be. Her name's Anne. She has no other. The two children stood and looked at each other a few minutes. In Sarah's eyes, a new thought was growing. I'm glad you have such a good home, she said. Perhaps Mrs. Brown will let you give the buns and breads to the children. Perhaps you would like to do it, because you know what it is to be hungry, too. Oh, yes, miss, said the girl. And somehow Sarah felt as if she understood her though the girl said nothing more, and only stood still and looked, and looked after her as she went out of the shop, and got into the carriage, and drove away. The end. That is the end of Sarah Crew, or What Happened at Miss Minchin's, by Frances Hodgson Burnett. thought you might get kind of a kick out of what is actually at the end of this book. It's got Scribner's Books for the Young and it's ads. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Scribner's Books for the Young, personally conducted by Frank R. Stockton. Two dollars. So things like that. Marvels of Animal Life. Huh. It's kind of a look into the past. Well, my goodness, the whole back end is filled with them. All right. Well, anyway, that was Sarah Crewer, What Happened at Miss Minchins by Frances Hodgson Burnett. I hope that you enjoyed reading it along with me. Um, I grew up loving The Little Princess. It was by far one of my favorite stories. And um, when I saw this in Half Price Books, because this is actually where I picked it up was Half Price Books, um, I was uh, confused. I was wondering, is this a new story that I had never heard of? Um, was there more than one Little Princess book? Was it a series or... You know, and so that kind of led me on a little bit of uh, exploration 
to learn more about Frances Hodgson Burnett and the Little Princess. Um, and that's when I found out how this was kind of like phase two of her story process uh, with, you know, first putting the stories out into the periodicals and then writing this and then, you know, getting a feel for it and fleshing it out and seeing what worked and what didn't work. Um, you'll notice if you're familiar with Little Princess, which I, I, I hope so. Anyway, there were some differences um, between the Little Princess and this, so it's kind of interesting to see the direction that she went with things. Um, I know in the Little Princess, her father is actually alive. Uh, he actually was, um, he, he came back and and she saw him, uh, I think, across the street at the the large house or the large family house or it was something like that. She saw him, I remember, and, um, you know, so it was... It was a nice little take on the story. And this one, she didn't find her father, but she did still find a family. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I had a lot of fun reading it. I know it was kind of uh, laid out and formulated a little bit funny, trying to figure out how I was going to record and, and, and whatnot. And so, um, you know, if you have any suggestions or anything, just let me know. And I think the next book that I'm going to read is going to be, let me grab it real quick here. Run over to my bookshelf. It is going to be Black Beauty, actually. Black Beauty. I have this really awesome little addiction. Edition. Black Beauty. Um, and it is by Anna Seawall. Seawall? So from what's the date oh i have no idea it doesn't say in here i'm sure it'll say it somewhere i'll find it before i start reading it but i have to be careful reading it because it's falling apart this feels like well this is very old i can tell you that so anyway that's the next one i'm going to be reading is black beauty all right so thank you i'll wrap this up thank you for for listening and hanging out with me and um, I'll see you next time. Bye.